Hi submarine friends, welcome back to watching me build my diesel electric submarine and Merry Christmas. Today is Christmas Day and to me this is the great way to spend a Christmas morning. But anyways, I've been working on my hydraulic drive propeller assembly. So this is the unit that holds the thrust from the propeller and holds the propeller shaft and the hydraulic motor just plugs into the end of it and it mounts to this ring which has an o-ring on this side and an o-ring on this side and so this goes underneath this o-ring seals and then the hydraulic motor seals to this o-ring on the face plus there's an o-ring inside the bore for the hydraulic motor shaft to turn on so what happened is the spring-loaded mechanical seal that was in there was not doing its job. So I made a new end cap right here, thinking that this might be the problem. And so I rebuilt it all, put the uh, mechanical seal back in, filled it with oil upside down, and after about a half an hour, it started leaking oil out. So <clears throat> I think the faces on that mechanical seal may have been compromised. So that makes me think, okay, well, if they're that sensitive, I don't want to use a mechanical seal like that. So bear with me for a second. I've got this mechanical seal. This is like a $1,700 Chesterton cartridge seal. I bought it many, many years ago and then the plan changed and I didn't use it. So it's brand spanking new. So I actually built a whole new propeller shaft to accommodate this. I did that yesterday. And then when I was on ChatGPT researching this seal, you know, it's allowed to have a two thou run out from side to side and like four thou this way. So if it goes outside those parameters, then the hardened faces inside that run together, they'll chip and then the seal will fail. Again, I don't like that. Uh, you know, I could be really far from shore or far from home or far from whatever and then the seal fails and the water wipes out my bearings because all the oil goes out. So, if we go back in time, to a submarine I used to own that was called Necton Gamma. It was a 1,000 foot certified submarine. It was not certified while I owned it because I highly modified it. But anyways, that submarine had a tail shaft or it had a, a propeller unit on the back of the submarine that was jettisoning. So if it got tangled, it would fall off. So it had a propeller shaft or power shaft coupled to the propeller shaft so it was assembly symbol similar to this and all it had was a lip seal at each end and it was full of oil now it was always giving me troubles and the oil was leaking out a little bit so what i did is i pumped it full of grease and guess what i never looked at it again it never gave me a problem it was fantastic so Super reliable system. Now it probably robs me a little bit of power, but I got power to spare. So I'm going to fill this with grease. So what you need though, is you need a way to completely fill the void with grease. So that's no problem. I can put vents in it with plugs and then I can have grease nipples in a couple of locations to pump it full of grease. But the grease is going to expand and contract and you're never gonna be sure to get rid of all the air completely inside. So when the submarine dives, um, water will push past the lip seal because there's air inside. Even a minute amount of air will allow the lip seal to fail. So what I've got, I've got a lip seal here and I've got this little piston. So this lip seal fits into this piston. I don't know what material this is. It's from a hydraulic cylinder piston, but it's a weird material because it machines like plastic and it's very carbony. Anyways, I don't care. 
This is a proof of concept. I will replace this with an aluminum piece once I source the material. I just want to get it built and try it and I can remove this easily. This is a stainless steel shaft, so we're all good. So again, this lip seal fits into this piston, right? And then on the outside of this piston is an O-ring. So I've got O-ring material here. I can make an O-ring, but I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna buy an O-ring um, because it's got so little pressure on it that I think the joint in making my own O-ring could be a problem. So now I'm just gonna lift this shaft out. So this is the propeller shaft. The hydraulic motor connects to this end with a coupler. So I slide this piston on <coughs> with the seal facing down. So this piston can slide on the shaft, you see that? So then, remember there's a seal inside here. So this goes here drops in. Now obviously the inner bearing is missing or this would be super solid, right? So now this piston is going to just float. So the whole thing is full of grease and when I push this piston in, it'll push against that grease like a bearing buddy on a boat trailer. So it's going to protrude, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch. That's it. And it's going to be pushing on the grease. So then put this back together then I have this spring which I salvaged from the from the mechanical seal so this goes here right this lip seal seals the piston to this stainless steel propeller shaft right so I drop that in I put this spring right here and the propeller pushes that spring pushes the spring down onto this piston. I'll have to make a plastic shim so it can't walk all over the place. So what that does is it pressurizes the grease, the amount of pressure that's created from this spring. So this spring might be a little bit too tough, so I might have to put a lighter spring, but I can play around with that. So it works exactly the same as a bearing buddy on a trailer. I think that'll work perfect because when the submarine dives, uh, the air, the air inside the, this chamber <clears throat> can compress because this spring is pushing down plus the water pressure is pushing on it. So the water pressure squeezes the air. So the grease moves a little bit. And then when I come to the surface, the water pressure is removed because I'm at the surface. And this piston can just return out because the air pressure will expand inside. I mean, we're talking about, you know, two water droplet size of air. Like it's so minute. We try to get rid of every last little bit. The goal is to have no air. And then this will never move. It'll just be preloaded with pressure on it all the time. So the pressure inside this chamber matches the ambient pressure. Whatever the water pressure is outside, they're equal. Perfect. The lip seal can handle that because the pressure is the same on both sides. So this seal will have ambient pressure on one side and the same pressure on the inside. So it won't leak. It'll just think it's at the surface. So that's what I've come up with. It took me a couple of days to figure this out, but now I am very happy. I could not be happier because if this fails, something goes wrong. It's still full of water resistant grease. You can go forever. Well, that's obviously an exaggeration, but you can go a real long time with water exposed to the outside of that grease because it's so packed with grease. The only way that the water is going to get to the bearing is if the grease is displaced. So it could last a really long time with a failed seal. So, you know, each time the submarine comes out of the water, I inspect it to make sure nothing's wrong and carry on. I might have to pop the propeller off just to get this out and have a look, but that's nothing. That's easy peasy. So I'm very happy with this. It's going to be like an army Jeep and that's the way I like it. So again, Merry Christmas. Ciao.